Hello, I'm Lucy Lacanienta, a research assistant for the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and I'm here today with Janice Johnson. Uh, Janice is a former research fellow here at the Maxwell Institute. She's the author of Convicting the Mormons, a historian of religious history, and now the acquisitions director for Deseret Book. And our artwork today that we have behind us that we'll focus on is called Alma Baptizes the Woman, painted in 2015 by Kathleen Peterson, a living and practicing artist here in Utah. Our set of scriptures comes from the book of Mosiah, particularly chapters 18 through 24. So Janice, to start us off, can you start by explaining the story that's illustrated here and how the artwork kind of interprets those scriptures? Sure. Um, so we have this moment in Mosiah 18, Alma, the one that we call the El Alma, the, the Alma the Elder, is um, he has been converted by the words of Abinadi, and he has begun to teach, but he has to do so in secret because King Noah is not a fan. Um, and he, we have a few times in the text in this chapter that as many people as wanted to hear, he would teach. So, so it's this very inclusive vision of anybody who's willing, who's ready to hear him is, is going and listening. And they would meet at this place called the Waters of Mormon. Um, this is really the heart of the Book of Mormon. It is this moment where the covenant is introduced to a people who are willing and ready and excited about it, and um, they're willing to, to show their commitment and make that covenant um, by entering the waters of baptism. That's wonderful. I love that context. Thanks. Can you contextualize this particular artwork in the larger tradi tradition of Latter-day Saint artworks? Um, I think that this, um, and we, we have had um, female artists from the beginning mm -hmm. <laughs> um, who have been contributing and sometimes contributing to our vision. But when we look at kind of the, the uh, more authoritative or the, the images that tend to show up in official church sources mm -hmm. and sometimes get the most play, they are definitely male-centric, as is much of the Book of Mormon itself. Mm -hmm. um, Nephi forgets to tell us his wife's name. Um, that's not something that is forefront in his, in his mind and the culture that he grew up in. Mm -hmm. um, and Kathleen Peterson has done something, I think, really beautiful here because she's not just included women, but she has made a woman the center of, of this representation of this chapter. And I think that it's a really beautiful thing because Alma goes to pains to, he actually says that 204 souls were brought to the truth. And so he's very... He's, he's specific, well, he, actually, let's see, let me find the exact, um, exact number. And he says, he talks about that they clapped their hands for joy. And then later he says about 204 souls. And I think that's fascinating because he wants to name all of them, but he's still not entirely, he's got that about there as, as he's, he's uh, this caveat I hope I didn't miss anyone, but he wants to identify everyone. And, but often when we see these images trying to identify everybody, there is a man at the center of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, whether, we have Alma, who is certainly bringing people to Christ. And, um, but here Kathleen chooses a woman to represent these 204 souls. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's a really beautiful thing, helping us to A, focus on the one. And I think that that's part of what Alma's trying to do. He gives us this, speci this specific number, even though he might be, a little, he could be off, he acknowledges that, but he wants everybody to be counted. Mm -hmm. And, and Kathleen is giving us an opportunity to count this one woman who was this one woman who clapped for joy mm -hmm. and who was so, who, who wanted to listen to Alma, who made that effort to go to this secret place where they would be safe and where they could be nourished by the good word of God. And she clapped her hands to, for, together for joy at this opportunity to enter into the covenant and to commit to the Lord 
um, commit to following the commandments and taking Jesus's name upon her. But we also get this beautiful moment where Alma is saying, look, think about this. Loving God and loving neighbor is crucial and mourning with those who mourn and comforting those who stand in need of comfort. And this is part of how we be how we are a witness of Christ mm -hmm. and how we demonstrate that we have made this commitment with with God. That's wonderful. I think this is a great opportunity to recognize that like significance of every soul in the gospel of Christ, women included. We've touched on this some, but how does the focus on women in this piece and in others by Kathleen Peterson set this work apart or affect the interpretation of the scriptures? Well, I think that, and, and I think this builds on what I, what I said before, but mm -hmm. it causes us to think about it differently because it's not framed the same way. Sometimes, like, if you see a kid or maybe a man in a white shirt and brown pants and he's kneeling in a green forest, it might be Joseph Smith. Like, we have, uh, culturally, as Latter-day Saints, we have certain ways that a have become canon. very, a visual yeah. canon that has become very familiar to us, mm -hmm. how we depict something. And just by putting a woman at the center of it, it shifts how we think about it. Mm -hmm. And and maybe causes us to, to recognize something different. Um, and here, we're not... It's, I think that it's a, it's a lovely thing because usually we want to focus on all the people, mm -hmm. but again, it gives us this very intimate moment. And this moment, and actually reminds me, as I was thinking about this today, um, of this picture that I have from being a missionary and um, this girl, she was 18, but um, named Lorena who got baptized. Mm -hmm. And just this... It was, I have this picture of her right after she came out of the water and it is this exuberant joy on her face. And, and I think Kathleen is giving us this little moment of that, of this, this really intimate moment for one of those 204 souls and this, this particular woman that we don't know her name, but we know her commitment and we know what how important this moment is for her. She, she's not just going along with the crowd. She has gone at, at great lengths to sacrifice, to be here, to be in, put her near self in danger, really, mm -hmm. to hear the good word of God and to make a, a covenant and a commitment with the Lord. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Can you share your personal reaction to this piece? Um, well, I just, I love the, the intimacy. And we... Um, the community is always going to be important for Latter-day Saints. The community is where we get knocked about sometimes and, and have an opportunity to come together and learn how to be saints and learn how to mourn with those who mourn and comfort those who stand in need of comfort as we, as we stand as witnesses of Christ. Um, but also we've, we have to internalize that ourselves. We have to make that commitment and that decision individually. And um, I, I love Kathleen's representation of that. Wonderful. Thank you, Denise. Do you have anything else to add to our conversation today? Um, no, we just need more women depicted. Mm -hmm. um, we, everybody belongs and, and we have a, an incomplete view when we're not bringing everyone in. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you.